Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be going over my hunting rifle setup. I've had this rifle for a few years now. It was my first rifle and I've killed some animal, uh, rifle I've killed some animals with, so it has a special place in my heart. Um, in this video, I'm gonna go over the reasons why I picked this particular rifle, why I picked certain accessories, take you through all of those accessories from back to front, and then of course give you the reasons why I love it and give you any reasons I dislike it and then uh, let you make your own choice if this is a rifle that you'd like to pick up uh, maybe in the near future. So I'll start with the features and the accessories that I have on this gun. So um, to start, this is a Tika CTR. It's a compact tactical rifle um, is the full name of it. It's chambered in 308. I picked 308 initially because it was uh, a few reasons. One, it's very widely available ammo. Um, so makes it a little cheaper to hunt with. Um, and practice with most importantly the more I can practice the better I'll be I don't have to spend three to four dollars a round to practice so 308 went into consideration from that uh, second reason I picked the 308 was it's it can kill just about any animal um, on earth for the most part within proper ranges or within reasonable ranges I should say um, that's not to say there aren't better tools for the job for a certain big game or a certain dangerous game but a 308 can do the job if you keep hunting uh, distances reasonable enough, 300 yards, um, plus or minus, uh, depending on the game animal. That's, that's a bit why I picked the 308. But uh, starting from the back, this is gonna be a limb saver pad that I put on it. Um, the 308 doesn't have a lot of recoil. In particular, this is a heavy, heavy rifle um, to make sure, make the recoil even less. Even all that considered, I still put a limb saver on here to make the felt recoil from the rifle even less than it already is and some people might think that's unnecessary for me I like to be completely sturdy and, and feel like the rifle's not even touching me when it goes off um, so I can make the most accurate shots possible when I'm shooting at game so a limb saver pad on the back the rifle uh, stock that it comes with uh, that this rifle comes with has an integrated cheek riser it's set at just the perfect height for me um, to be able to view my scope uh, and view it well. Um, moving up here, I have a, a Leupold VX3, four and a half by 14. Um, it's a great, great scope. Um, Leupold has a great warranty on all their products made here in the US. Um, one of the things about this scope in particular that I liked was that it's, super, it's a super simple reticle. It's a duplex reticle, so there's nothing fancy. There's nothing in my way on it, uh, which makes it, uh, especially in the heat of the moment of hunting, you don't want a lot to look at. You want the animal and you want your reticle and that's it. You don't want a bunch of other stuff on there. So that's why I picked it uh, in particular. Uh, the magnification ranges on this, four and a half to 14. In my opinion, you don't need more than 14. If you're hunting at reasonable ranges, 400, even 500 yards in, you can make shots with a 14 magnification. Of course, you can go higher. That's gonna add cost, it's gonna add weight and um, I particularly was not interested in the added cost and 14 does me just fine for the hunting distances that I typically hunt in with the 308. One of the other features I really love about the um, this loophole scope is that it comes with custom dial systems. Uh, they're custom turrets that you can put on the rifle uh, built specifically to the ammo that you like to shoot. So this here gun in particular shoots Barnes uh, copper bullets, 150 grain, exceptionally well. Uh, cloverleaf patterns, those on my target, and that's what I love to shoot for all animals that I hunt this with. So I have that bullet matched up with this turret. Um, I took the speeds of the bullet that it comes out of this rifle, and I had this custom made to be able to engrave it, and this comes free with any uh, scope purchase from Leupold, uh, which is great. So that's my scope on the rifle. Moving down to the bipod, this is a uh, Spartan Javelin bipod. Um, I in particular like this one because you can remove it and put it in uh, my bino harness. I can put it in my pack when I'm not using it. It's not in the way um, when I'm hiking around. It's not getting caught on trees or bushes or my pack or whatever. It can re you can remove it, it's super light and easy to reattach. Um, if I have other rifles, I can just simply buy this integrated um, insert here on the rifle and this bipod can work on multiple rifles I don't have to go buy another bipod for other rifles and of course the uh, one of the better parts uh, accessories that I have on the rifle is my suppressor this is a silencer co Omega uh, 300 suppressor 
It takes just about any caliber you can throw at it and it suppresses it down. Uh, of course, it mitigates the sound. So silent, AKA silencers, mitigates the sound uh, that would usually ring my ears a bit when I shoot or those uh, ears around me when we shoot. Uh, so it takes away the sound and it also helps with the recoil. If you notice, it has an integrated um, muzzle brake on the end of it, which helps even more with the recoil. All of that considered from uh, front to back, this rifle weighs about, uh, not about, it weighs 10.6 pounds when it doesn't have ammo loaded into it. I imagine when I have this uh, 10 round magazine loaded with ammo, it would probably get closer to 11 pounds. I personally love that it's a heavier rifle. I love heavy rifles to be able to shoot them more accurately, they're much more stable for me, um, and I'm much more accurate uh, with the heavy rifle. So that's kind of the overview of front to back of the rifle. Um, reasons why I got it, number one, hunting, right? Um, it's my hunting rifle, um, but it can also be used <clears throat> as a great all-purpose rifle. So if I wanted to get into uh, target shooting, recreational shooting, um, a shit hits the fan rifle, this is gonna be a great rifle for all of those uh, pursuits. And part of that being it has the heavy barrel, so I can shoot multiple strings of shots um, in a row without it heating up too badly and affecting accuracy. Um, it comes with a 10 round mag, so I can load this up 10 rounds. Um, I don't need that much when I'm hunting or I would hope I wouldn't, right? So I would practice, but um, it is nice to know that I can carry more without having to have an external an ammo carrier or an ammo wallet on me to be able to uh, have ammo in the backcountry if I lose a round, uh, or whatever happens out there. If I have a string of misses, I have more with me because of this 10 round ammo. Uh, some of the things I like about it, it's extremely, extremely accurate. Um, it can shoot anything from 150 grain bullets to 168 grain bullets. That's all I've tested. Um, I typically only like to shoot copper or monolithic bullets. Uh, we can get into that in another video, but the ammo that I like to put through it, um, it typically shoots well, uh, sub uh, one MOA, which means sub one inch at 100 yards. I particularly uh, have settled on the Barnes 150 grain TTSX, um, which I explained earlier. Um, I've settled on that, that's kind of my favorite round. It has a perfect combination of uh, velocity, feet per second, um, energy delivery out at range. Um, I get great velocities over 2000 feet per second at 500 yards, which means this would be a rifle that I could um, take out to 500 yards and ethically shoot at an animal if all conditions were right because of the velocity and the bullet performance at those speeds. Um, so that's what made me settle on that. Um, another thing I like about it is that it's heavy. A lot of people might think that's a downside. People like to um, get super light rifles, ultralight rifles to carry around. They don't like to carry a heavy weapon. Personally, I think carrying a heavy weapon is much better because you're gonna be way more accurate um, when you can mitigate the recoil of your weapon when you're shooting at an animal. You, have, you spend all year um, a lot of money looking forward to one particular hunt. It comes down to one particular moment when you're on the animal and looking to take that shot. You want everything in your favor in those situations. And for me, that means having a heavy rifle so I'm super sturdy and I don't make any mistakes and I leave as little to chance as possible. Now, what else do I like about it? Well, it's my first rifle. It's the first rifle I've killed animals with and uh, you know, a kid never forgets, or a grown kid never forgets his, uh, his first rifle. So that's another great thing about it. And um, I explained this earlier, but getting it in 308 or my decision to get it chambered in 308 was a number of factors. One, ammo availability. There's tons of ammo available for 308 uh, in wide varieties. Uh, bullet weights are anywhere from 130 to 180 plus if you custom load your own ammo. So you have a good range of bullets you can play with. Um, and the other thing, it's cheap. You can find it anywhere. If you go to a third world country, you could probably find 308 ammo on the shelf somewhere uh, to buy. Um, the other thing I really love about it, I don't know if you can tell in this video, but the barrel is only 20 inches long. I personally love, love a short barrel. I, if this, you know, some rifles come in 22 to 26 inch barrels, and that's just way too long for me. When I'm hiking around, I don't mind the weight, but I do mind when it's, the rifle's super long and I'm bumping into bushes, I'm getting caught on trees um, and all of that. So I love a short barrel. Um, if I ever do get another rifle in a magnum caliber, I'm gonna get the shortest barrel length 
allowable for that caliber uh, because I just love the ability to kind of bushwhack with a short weapon, um, a short and stout weapon, short and heavy. Um, but that's what I love about it. Um, what I don't like about it, um, not really much. I, I love just about everything about it, hence why I picked it. Um, I guess if I had to pick at something, it would be um, the stock is a little bland, right? Just the plain black. Um, there's nothing cool or uh, fun about it. It's just very simple um, meat and potatoes stock. Um, I have painted it in the past. Um, I didn't like how the paint came out, so I removed it um, with acetone. But um, I guess the stock, if I had to pick something that I didn't like or I would eventually replace or upgrade, would be the stock of the rifle. Uh, one thing that other people might say they don't like about it is that it's heavy or too heavy to hunt with. Again, I tell those people to get stronger and lift some weights. Um, it's not a heavy rifle. You just got to be strong and realize that you're out there to hunt an animal and give it a quick death and an accurate shot will ensure that. And to have the most accurate shot possible, you want a heavier rifle to stay sturdy. Um, yeah, and that's the that's my that's going to be my hunting setup now this year in 2024. I have a Arizona uh, bear tag that I'm going to go out and try and hunt bear this fall uh, with the rifle. I didn't get drawn for deer, so I'm going to replace that week in the woods with hunting uh, solely bear to see what I can turn up. I'll likely take this rifle with me to Idaho on my bow hunt for when I'm hunting for elk. Um, and I'm going to have the rifle with me if I see any bears or I see any wolves. Um, it's nice to be able to have a rifle to whip out and uh, not have to waste a bunch of time putting a stock on one of those animals that I'm not actually there to hunt in particular. Um, and then most exciting, I have a um, Arizona archery, or, sorry, an Arizona rifle hunt uh, late season here uh, in Arizona that this rifle is gonna be used for. Um, again, some people have tried to talk me into taking something much bigger than a 308 for that. You don't need it. Um, a 308 is gonna be plenty for elk as long as I keep things reasonable. I know my weapon, I know my capabilities with this weapon. Um, I'm very accurate with it, I practice a lot. And uh, I'm really excited to take it on those hunts and hopefully get those on film too for you all. Um, anyway, that's the review on the Tika CTR chambered in 308. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think if you have this rifle or you're considering it or if you have something similar that you love, I'd love to hear about it. Thank you all.